All right, now that I've dealt with the dogs, we can talk about impressionism. The title is, what's my hair doing? Oh well. The title of this video is Impressionism, colon, the first modern art style. And uh, that might be a bit incendiary, but the point that I'm trying to get across to you in this video is that Impressionism starts a remarkable change in the world of art. For almost all of art history, at least in the European sense, which of course the art market, for better or for worse, is dominated by European thought on art, especially in the 1700s, 1800s. The art world has been dominated by the classical style, starting with the Greeks, and then the Romans, and then the Renaissance, continuing through the Baroque period all the way up to the neoclassical style in France, which at the time of the start of Impressionism, neoclassical is the style that is popularized. It is the approved style. It is the style that is most associated with French nationalism, although you could make the argument that Romanticism is also making a push, but even Romanticism is still very based in the classical. And with Impressionism, you're going to start to get away from the classical. Um, for the sake of setting the scene, let's go ahead and say that modern art breaks down into two categories, abstraction and non-European influences. And Impressionism is the beginning of this. Let's talk about abstraction first. Um, if I was better at the internet, I could pull up a picture and you know put it on the screen or something, but I don't know how to do that. But if you look at Claude Monet's Haystacks, what he has done is he has painted the rough impression, or where the name comes from, Impressionism, of Haystacks. But his focus is not actually on uh, the Haystacks themselves. A photo could take a photo of a Haystack. Uh, Louis Daguerre with the Daguerreotype could easily uh, render a Haystack near perfect. What Claude Monet and Impressionism in general is concerned with is starting to show things that cameras cannot show, like how light moves through a scene. And of course, this will go even further as we abstract even further. And after Impressionism kind of breaks the mold, breaks away from classical, you're gonna get post-Impressionist, you're gonna get Fauvism, you're gonna get Cubism, you'll get all the way to Abstract Expressionism. And by the time you hit Abstract Expressionism, artists like Mark Rothko or Jackson Pollock or Agnes Martin are using just color to create paintings rather than using color that is supposed to represent shapes or forms that we recognize like landscapes or portraits but this starts once again with impressionism um, so the impressionists are trying to show how light moves through a scene once again Claude Monet's haystacks you might notice that there are many different Claude Monet haystacks also for uh, Japanese bridge where he paints over the the uh, the creek and that Japanese bridge style which we'll maybe talk about a little bit later he paints them at different times of year at different times of day and in different weather conditions because his focus is to show the light he is obsessed with the movement of light and every impressionist has something that they're more focused on uh, Degas is focused on movement in his paintings of ballerinas, his paintings of racehorses, so on and so forth. But they're not interested in showing things super realistically. They're interested in showing things in a way that cameras, once again, cannot show. Um, and this is a trend that will continue on and on and on until you reach complete abstraction, where, like Mark Rothko's paintings, don't even have names. You bring nothing to the painting. What you get from it is what you see and what it reflects back onto you. But we're a little ways away from that. Uh, my point being that this move towards seeing what color could do to the point where color is the only thing on the canvas starts with this modern impressionism. Now, the other half of this that I already brought up is non-European elements. Uh, a great example of that is Mary Cassatt and her focus on Japanese art. When the Japanese woodblock art, uh, the art that we probably associate with the Great Wave over Kanagawa, uh, comes to France in the uh, exhibition of Beaux Arts, I forget the exact name of the year, Europeans are enthralled with this non-European art. And as modern art styles progress, especially once you get into Cubism, you're going to get more and more these non-European symbols, whether it's Pablo Picasso with his African mask, or whether it's Paul Gaigon with his representation of Tahiti, uh, Tahitian women, and uh, non-European or uh, Eastern religion iconography but this once again starts with impressionism which is the reason I'm saying that impressionism is the first modern art style um, because Mary Cassatt 
becomes very enamored with the Japanese style of woodblock, and you will see it reflected in her painting. So for the first, to say it generally, the first time in European history, people are painting subject matter that is influenced not from the classical style, not from Greek and Roman, not from the Renaissance, but from non-European areas. And then also, another reason that I said it's the modern style, to kind of wrap this up, is not only are they using non-European elements in their paintings, they are also not showing things through naturalism or realism. They are showing things more abstractly. And of course, this is just the beginning. It, once you get past World War I, and you get into the 1920s, you'll hit cubism, and the abstraction and the influence of non-European subject matter will really explode, even into the architecture. Um, but this is just the beginning of that. I hope this clears up any questions you might have about why Impressionism is referred to sometimes as the first modern art style. Um, I will talk to you, or talk at you more accurately next time.